mighty Ponderosa with the blazing sun. We're going that way. There's a mommy bear and a baby bear in the area. I have seen their paw prints. And I would just as soon avoid them and avoid the jawan and a clawin because I do not want to have to find a tree and climb it just to discover I'm too old. Here's a happy thought. When Apache warriors discovered and captured an enemy, they would hand them over to the women for torture. And the women would stake the prisoner down next to an anthill like this and then stomp on the anthill. This served as a reminder to future enemies, don't fuck with us. I think it was successful. You'll notice that on one side of that ponderosa pine there are no branches. Its parent rubbed them off as the child was growing. And the parent is now dying. In fact, dead. Once the parent falls, new branches will grow on the youngster. These ponderosas are about, I would guess, eight meters. These are pretty tall for a skinny ponderosa. When a ponderosa dies, it tends to die with a mighty thump. Before it dies, or before it falls, it tends to compress and twist. This one twisted while it was still standing in a clockwise no, I'm sorry, a counterclockwise twist. I don't know if that's viewable. You'll find a whole bunch of cottonwood down by the river that are ancient and they do not twist because they're full of water. They just blow over and die. Ponderosas, they die on their feet and then they slowly entwine around themselves in a spiral and then fall over. Hmm. Onward. This is what I mean by a ponderosa pine twisting while it's still on its roots. You can see how that bark wrapped around from low to high around the trunk. This one appears to have fallen fairly recent to when it died because the twist is moderate. A helium balloon. People wonder why I detest humanity. I shall pick it up.
Here is a young pine trying to reproduce. I have paused on the slope. Following elk footprints. The ground is heavy with clay soil and it retains the moisture enough for this bunch of grass. When drought comes, the grass will try its best to reproduce and then die. Onward, I must tra travel. We're going that way. I have paused here to contemplate and refresh myself. Or as a United States citizen might say, crap out my breakfast. I brought with me the last remaining roll of toilet paper in the United States of America. And the paper that I use will go out with me. I am not going to bury it, and I'm not going to fucking burn it. Whatever one packs in, one packs out. Except maybe poop. This is how I want to be remembered. Nothing but my skull. That has a poorly functioning brain. We're going that way. It's a little strenuous for someone who's almost 60 years old. But I'm a real man, so I will continue onward. Here's a beautiful quartzite boulder. Next to another mylar 
helium bloom. I have reached Desert File Rule Number 3, which states, when you're weary, rest. If you're still weary, it is time to return. The colloquially is, if you have consumed a third of your water, that is, a third, not a half, it is also time to return. <sighs> I passed what is what a archaeologist would call a glorious ruin, ancient Anasazi ruin, has not been visited by humanity in 800 years. Not looted by academics for research. To hell with them people. Not looted by pot hunters probably still has pots and water pitchers and even water canteens. There might be some sandals or something in there. Might be ancient grains. I left it the fuck alone. No footprints, no exploring, no fucking pitchers. Pardon the language. <clears throat> I was extremely tempted to include the ruin in this video, but that's just ego on my part. You leave the past in the past. I might be a mystic or a poet, but you don't fuck with that shit. It is time to return. I hope everybody has enjoyed this exploration with me. It's been one hell of an adventure. <laughs>